Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of This Eats. Italian today. From delicious handmade pastas to authentic Italian wood-fired pizzas, unique ice creamy goodness and juicy meatballs, you're in for a bellissimo treat. Italian food is something that, you know, I used to try to dabble in myself, you know, make a whole bunch of pastas. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nutritious though. Anyway, let's get some proper authentic deliciousness today. Can't wait. Let's go. Our first stop, Pasta in Cuore in Mount Eden. This place specializes in fresh, heartfelt, handmade pastas, which you get to see the chefs preparing from the moment you enter their store. This place is steeped in history with precious recipes that were passed down from the owner's grandmother. So I've got the tortelloni stuffed with buffalo ricotta, served with sage and butter. Can't wait, it smells amazing. Tortelloni is a bit larger than tortellini, which I think people are a bit more familiar with. Oh my goodness, guys, those flavors are so delicious. The pasta here is incredible. It's all handmade and you can really taste the quality ingredients that's gone into it. It's nice and creamy, it's cheesy, not overly salty or anything. It's just a very, very beautiful, delicious dish. So I have got the pappadelle lamb ragu and any dish that can remind me of a mince pie has got to be a winner for me. Slow cooked lamb and you've got some of this green pappadelle which has got a little bit of spinach inside. There's only a little bit of that lamb ragu on here that you can see anyway. But hidden underneath layers and layers are so much cheesy, delicious, rich, whiny flavour. The lamb is just delicious. It's really encrusted all throughout that pappadelle. And the pasta itself is just cooked al dente, beautiful. So sad that this meal has come to an end because that was incredibly delicious. If you guys are looking for some fresh, quality, handmade Italian pasta, you've got to come check out Pasta Cuore. This place is fantastic. So many options in the menu, lots of vegetarian ones too. A quality, quality Italian restaurant. Welcome to Pasta Facts. Pasta is a staple Italian food and there are over 600 different types. But the three most popular ones are penne, spaghetti and macaroni. Fact number two, the traditional way of cooking pasta is known as al dente and that's also the way that you describe a delicious tasting pasta. Final fact might be expected, but Italy consumes the most amount of pasta a year and it exports 1.7 million tons a year. That's a lot of pasta. Well, you can't have an Italian episode without some gelato ice cream. So we're currently in Auckland CBD, headed to one of those most popular ice cream shops around, and that's Giapo. Normally, you'd see some lines out the door, but luckily we're here in the middle of the day. We might avoid those queues. Yo guys, so it's been a little while since we've actually come to Giapo. Last time I've been here was when it was on Queen Street. Right now it's on Gore Street. And the whole thing has changed. It used to be ice cream out of a cabinet, but now it's an ice cream experience. <laughs> we'll show you what I mean right now. Testing flavor that we've got here is the quintessential NZ Hokey Pokey. So almost any store that you go to New Zealand should have this flavor. Let's try Giapo's one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a delicious classic kiwi flavor right there. Mm. So I've got the Giapo Bono, which is named after the head chef. And uh, it's got a whole bunch of Italian things in it. You know, on theme with this episode, <laughs> Italian food. Let's give it a try. Oh, that's super tasty. It's got little biscuity things inside. A base of a slightly salted caramel ice cream. It's got Italian meringue, hazelnut praline, and amaretti biscuit. Amadetti biscuit. Yeah, so it's like a biscuit, they bake it, and they take it out, crush it up, bake it again. So the next step of the ice cream making process is to choose what kind of creation you're most into. So what we're actually getting for today, we've got the Pararoa Parai, which is Maori fried bread with two of our favorite ice cream choices in the middle. So I have gone with the Giapo, the classic flavor, and Yen has gone with buffalo milk. I didn't even get to try that, so I can't wait to get into that one. Cleaved in buffalo milk, it smells really milky. Mm. That's 
So you don't get to try any. <laughs> if you do plan on coming to Chiapo, if you're coming in summer, you can expect to wait in a very long line. We've been told that it goes all the way down the street over there. But we're here in winter and the lines are a little bit more manageable. There's something so comforting about the moldy fried bread. As soon as you sink your teeth into it, you get some fantastic buffalo delicious sweetness inside. Oh man, this is an award winning ice cream combination right here. I can see why Peter really liked this ice cream. <gasps> it made a bit of a mess. I think Giaffo here has definitely changed the way that we see and interact with ice cream. It's such an awesome concept here. And if you haven't yet, come try it out. What would an Italian episode be without some wood-fired pizza? So next up, we're headed over to Francesca's Pizzeria in West Auckland. Francesca's Pizzeria is named after Chiro's daughter, Francesca, and it's a tiny little store. Let's go inside, I'll show you around. We're inside the shop now, and the wood-fired oven smells amazing. It's so nice and warm and cozy in here. Plus, some eggplants just got done. Chiro is the friendly owner and chef of this cozy pizzeria. He makes everything from scratch, from the pizzas to the pastas. The store has been open for four years, though Chiro has been a chef for far longer than that. You can clearly see and taste Chiro's passion for cooking through his food. And they smell incredible straight out of that wood-fired oven. So I've got the Francesca's Choice, which is Chiro's daughter. What's in it is tomato, mozzarella, eggplant, spinach and salami. Go in for a bite. That is super, super delicious. You can taste all the fresh ingredients and the pizza base itself. So young. The tomatoiness, the cheesiness, that eggplant. Ah, that's incredible. And that spinach also cuts through nicely with that pizza. Mm. You can see why this place gets such amazing reviews. Now I've got to go in on this classic margarita pizza. Handmade sourdough, mozzarella cheese, and a tomato base. Look at that goodness. And you know the crust is no good because no check out this nice little bit of char on the back. The tomato, it's got such a sweet but slightly tangy flavor. And then the sour bread, nice texture on the bottom. Oh, that is so delicious. It's got that little bit of char which comes through right at the end and the mo mozzarella cheese adds that nice creaminess. Chiro asked me to be black and white about my review here. What else can I say? This is a 10 out of 10 pizza. You definitely need to come and check this place out. It's delicious. Well, I'm pretty sad that that's over. Thank you so much, Chiro. That's the most amazing pizza you can get in Auckland, hands down. Probably New Zealand. But anyway, we've got one last spot to go. Let's head off now. For our final stop, we're on K Road and we're headed over to Coco's Cantina. This place is run by Renee from Kaitaia. It's a home style, neighborhood inspired Italian restaurant but run by Kiwi. Let's go check this out. One thing that sets Coco's Cantina aside from the rest of the places is definitely the vibe. As soon as you come in through those doors, you are treated to a wonderful array of Kiwiana and Italian decoration. Also, the staff here are super friendly and you just feel like you're at home. I've got the famous spaghetti meatballs from Coco's Cantina. Famous because this is pretty much the dish that everybody recommends as soon as I talk to them about this place. This looks like it's going to be an amazing bite of spaghetti and meatball. I've got a little bit of cheese, got a little bit of meatball, and a whole lot of pasta. Let's get in there. It's got that really homely flavor profile. And I really like the addition of the little crispy breadcrumbs on here as well. Because uh, it adds just a little bit extra texture along with the cheese and the delicious meat. What's also cool about this place is on the menu you can get some polenta fries. Polenta is a ground up cornmeal. It's definitely nothing like a standard potato fry. The cornmeal is very soft. It's almost like if you took porridge and you turned it into a chip. So it had a really crispy coating on the outside and the inside was extremely soft and mushy. That's what it's like. I'm excited, it's my turn now. So I've got the ravioli here. It's potato, wild mushrooms, thyme and lemon. The pastry is nice and thin. Mushrooms, really nice and earthy, and all topped off with just that subtle lemon flavor. That's a really yummy ravioli. 
so that wraps up our last meal here at Coco's Cantina. I was just talking to Renee, the owner, and she was telling me something super cool. She actually flew the entire staff here at Coco's Cantina out to Rome for two weeks and they closed up shop and everything. And if you guys have enjoyed this Best Eats Italian episode, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button. Also, leave us a comment down below which one of these places you guys enjoyed the best. Alright, catch you all next time.